Hello and welcome to this review of my AcePad Tech Hall Effect keyboard. This has to be one of the most exciting developments in keyboards for a long time. Sure, Hall Effect keyboards have existed for decades, like this old Wang made by Honeywell, but an actually usable one, that was unheard of until now, as the old ones were all extremely complicated and didn't work with normal PCs. Therefore, this keyboard is unique and more than worth looking at. It's gathered considerable attention in the community recently, and AcePad Tech sent me two for review, one older model and one updated one I got in just this week. So, just like with the Matthias and Cooler Master, this is a sponsored video, but again, I insisted that I be allowed to do an impartial, unbiased review, as always. After he found out about it, the keyboard was improved over several iterations with the help of community member Jose Soltron, alias Xmit, more on that later. The keyboard is still a work in progress, and a tactile and clicky version of the switches is being developed right now, as well as several other additions and improvements. But for now, we're looking at the linear variant, which is what Hall Effect switches are most well known for anyway. So let's talk about the switches first, that's what the keyboard is all about after all. Now to understand what's so interesting about the Hall Effect, let's have a look at what it is. Basically, Edwin Hall discovered that if you put a magnet next to something with electricity running through it, like a wire, you can pull some of the electrons off their path. Therefore, they pile up on one side of the wire, so the electrons become unevenly distributed, resulting in a voltage across the wire, which you can measure. I explain this in greater detail in my ITT video, click the link to take you to that explanation if you're interested. Essentially, it's a really clever and more efficient way to detect keystrokes than traditional designs where it's just two electrodes being pushed together. But why would I want a Hall Effect keyboard? What advantages does it bring? First, they're incredibly reliable. While contact-based switches such as Cherry MX have lifetimes in the tens of millions of key presses, Hall Effect switches go much further than that. Think about it, what part of it is going to fail? Magnets don't wear out, springs don't wear out, and the sensor is solid state, that's not going to wear out either. In terms of switch longevity, it doesn't get any more reliable than this. AcePad Tech very conservatively claim a lifetime of 100 million keystrokes per switch, but I'm pretty sure it's actually a lot higher, quite possibly well into the billions actually. Hall effect switches used to be popular for a wide variety of applications, but because they were expensive to make, they're now mostly confined to the military and aerospace industries, etc., where absolute reliability is paramount. Second, these switches are bounce-free. See, when switch contacts close, they actually rapidly open and close in quick succession with tiny lightning arcing across them at very short distances. This is called contact bounce. To prevent a keystroke from registering 20 or so times with every press, the keyboard controller uses a short predefined delay, usually 5 milliseconds, in which it ignores all inputs from that switch after it's been triggered, called debouncing. But when switches get dirty or have been used a lot or they weren't very well made to begin with, they can start to bounce for longer than the debouncing delay, which results in the switch registering more than once when you press it. This is called switch chatter. But Hall effect switches aren't based on contacts closing, they simply produce an analog voltage depending on the distance between the magnet and the sensor, so a switch bounce shouldn't come into play. The lightning is also what wears contact-based switches out, by the way. It causes oxidation of the contact terminals. I would advise AcePad Tech to program some hysteresis into the switches, though, because at the moment they don't have any. Third, being based on just moving magnets, these switches can operate underwater. At least that's what they assured me multiple times would be the case. Okay, so it's not actually waterproof, but I guess it's still water resistant. Now you might be wondering why water resistant switches are desirable. The answer is simple. 
loads of people ruin their keyboards because they accidentally spill a drink into it, especially with the current trend of keyboards that are hard or even impossible to open. This means that your keyboard can easily die from this. But with a waterproof keyboard, that's much less of a problem, especially because this one can be disassembled easily. Ace Partech do two types of models, one with a fixed cable and one with a detachable one. Obviously, the detachable model isn't fully waterproof because of the connector point, but it's quite water resistant. Fourth, with the right implementation, they have full N key rollover. Contact based switches generally have two key rollover where the amount of keys you can press at the same time is limited due to electrical limitations of the matrix. With two key rollover, you're only guaranteed two keys at the same time, although with some combinations you can go up to six or more. With Hall effect switches, this phenomenon doesn't occur, so it's possible to implement them in such a way that they have full N key rollover, so you could press as many keys at the same time as you'd want. Because Hall effect switches are so complicated though, Ace Patek are not quite there yet. The rollover is high enough that you won't have any problems playing games on it, but if you really press your whole hand flat down, you'll see some keys won't register. Ironically, because of the weird implementation they had, old Honeywell keyboards like this one apparently had just one key rollover. If you want to know how rollover works, what limits it, and what you can do to increase it, check out the video in the link on the screen right now. And fifth, because they're contactless, they have the potential to be much smoother. See, in traditional switch designs like Cherry MX and Alps, the slider, which is the part you press down on, rubs against metal contacts which causes them to close, registering a key press. However, this rubbing obviously causes friction, and that can result in a scratchy, unpleasant key feel. Because Hall effect switches are contactless, there's no need for any rubbing, so the switches can be made to feel much smoother. So, what are they actually like in the flesh? For this, I'm going to benchmark them against the current industry standard, Cherry MX Black. Now, MX Blacks are well known to have a scratchy key feel, which isn't very pleasant. Their older switches are considered to be much better, but standards have fallen sharply over the years. Well, in the earlier keyboard I got, the key feel wasn't actually all that smooth. There was a strong grainy sensation on those, and I was a bit disappointed at this. In fact, I found it to be the board's biggest weakness at the time. I got it in with 70 gram spring stock, although I also asked for a set of 50 gram springs, which I substituted into the alphanumeric cluster. And the lighter springs made this grainy feel less obvious, so I like them better in a way. It should be noted that these weights are bottom out weights, not actuation weights. So the 70 gram springs are actually a little bit lighter than MX blacks, and the 50 gram ones are lighter than MX reds. The new board I got in, presumably in response from complaints from some of the testers about switch smoothness, definitely feels a lot nicer and way smoother than MX Black. If you press the keys off axis, there's the slightest hint of scratchiness, almost unnoticeable, but otherwise they're extremely smooth, almost as smooth as Fujitsu Leaf Spring actually. The weighting is fairly nice on the 70 gram springs, and they feel really responsive, but the actuation happens at a low enough force that I sometimes accidentally trigger keys when I'm gaming, just by resting my fingers on the keycaps, and some people have complained the switches are too light, thinking 70 grams was the actuation force. They are apparently working to develop 85 gram springs as well, in response to this by the way. They actuate at about 1.8 to 2 millimeters, and I think they're working on a version in which you can actually manually adjust how far into the key travel they actuate, but for the moment, this is it. That's a really unique feature, by the way, and I think people will definitely like that. Overall, I found it to be pretty good for gaming, even though some people might prefer some stiffer springs for them. And it's pretty good for typing as well, but in that case, I actually prefer the lighter 50 gram springs. Interestingly, the 70 gram springs make for the most linear switches I've ever seen. Normally, linear switches like Cherry MX and Alps have a kind of starting force you need to apply before the slider moves at all. 
but these guys don't have that at all. They basically start at zero and get progressively stiffer. Very interesting. The switches don't sound particularly good though. It's a rather plasticky, high-pitched sound, and it's quite loud due to the tall, thin keycaps which amplify the noise. However, the sound becomes more silent with shorter and thicker caps like cherry double shots. Let me compare that side by side for you here. On this particular one, something also went weird with the spacebar stabilizers because it's the squeakiest spacebar I've ever heard. Listen to this. My other board didn't have that, and I don't think I've seen any similar complaints from other users, so it's probably just this one board. Furthermore, I'll probably be able to just shut it up with a dollop of lube on it, but <laughs> as it is, it sounds pretty hilarious. So, on to the construction. This is not easy to cover, as it's available in a massive range of different models. Both of the ones I have are full size, because I like full size, but they also do 10 keyless versions as well as 60% ones, so you can get them small or big and in ANSI or ISO layouts. They offer several case options. This one is black acrylic, but you can get other colours too, and they even do a model made out of bamboo. The bamboo model can, if you want, be coated to make it water resistant, but they mentioned that the tongue oil they use for it is rather pungent for a few days, so keep that in mind. I think the bamboo model will probably prove to be quite popular, but I kind of like the acrylic versions myself, which look nice and sleek, I think. They also offer an incredible looking version made with Chinese redwood, but that one is much more expensive. Instead of a more straightforward moulded case, it's made up of several layers which are screwed together. The problem with this is that it's virtually impossible to make all the layers match up identically using this system, which stood out a lot more on the earlier model I got in, but it's much better now. One advantage you get from a layer case like this is that you end up with a case that's incredibly thick compared to mould cases. While those are just a thin shell surrounding the electronics, this is basically a solid block so it's super resilient, all the more because it can be taken apart and serviced quite easily if necessary. The switches are even clip-in, not soldered, so you can modify them quickly and easily without the need for any tools or a soldering iron. This does mean that they come out more easily in a trip from China, and this one came with two of the switches for and out, but that's half a minute's work to put them back in. It doesn't have any flip-out feet, instead it has a bar at the bottom, which raises it by a fixed amount. Presumably this is because of the sheet manufacturing process used to make the case. It's a good angle for me, but it might not be ideal for everyone, so keep that in mind. By the way, the box is also really nice, and appropriately, it's magnetically sealed. It's marketed as a gaming keyboard, which is definitely a first for Hall Effect keyboards. Therefore, there are a bunch of gaming features, such as Windows key lock, an FN key lock, a full keyboard lock even, adjustable polling rate and per key customizable backlighting over five different profiles, as well as more generically useful features such as multimedia shortcuts, spill resistance, etc. Without spending too much time on it, it's got full RGB backlighting with 16.8 million colors on all keys. It has a whole bunch of preset patterns you can cycle through, causing various levels of nausea, or you can just switch it off, and you can set brightness, speed, etc. Right now, you're limited to board side customization, but they're working on software to configure the lighting in more detail. One thing I noticed is that the light bundling isn't 100% optimal, which I've noticed on some other modern boards as well. On this yellow, for example, you can see one side is a bit more red and the other is a bit more green. Perhaps as a result of this, most moving patterns like this default one focus almost exclusively on the three primary colours red, blue and green, which of course don't have this issue. By the way, another funky thing is that they swapped the right control and function keys around. Don't really know why they did that, and I don't really see the point to be honest, but you get used to it eventually. 
The keycaps are thin double shot PBT POM, so in terms of keycaps, they're pretty damn high spec. Double shot lettering is the most high quality, resilient lettering available, somewhat of a theme for this keyboard, and PBT and POM are the most resilient materials. It's normally really hard to double shot PBT, instead they generally use ABS, but ABS wears away faster and yellows over time, while PBT does not. Some letters and symbols are split as if they were stenciled, but it's not too showy, and they do black or white keycaps. Note that because of the translucency of the lettering, the black keycaps are really hard to read if you don't have the backlighting on. I'm quite impressed by the quality on these actually, but if you don't care for them, they made the slider MX mount so you can put cherry made or custom keycaps on them if you want. So, verdict time. I think the idea is incredible. A usable Hall Effect keyboard with all the advantages it could bring would be fantastic. However, it's clear to me that it's not completely there yet. They've made some really good progress and the keyboard is actually really nice. But right now, this keyboard is obviously not as good as it's ever going to get. They're still developing it, and I know they have loads of improvements on the cards, but they're having some issues with quality control at the moment, which led a few early testers to leave some bad reviews, and it left me with a squeaky spacebar and a drowned keyboard. I can't stress it enough though, I think, when they've given it some more time, this will be an incredible keyboard. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.